Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today, we've got a look at things about to get more interesting on the sun. We've got the first of two Dr. Robitaille videos we expect to share this week. We've got solar physics, solar storms, and the last disaster cycle event 6,000 years ago. So let's go to the last 24 hours on our star where it was mostly calm except for an M-class solar flare at the UTC day change. We'll get a closer look there. And we'll also have what appears to be the return of the big coronal holes on deck as well. Let's start with the flaring, and you'll see an almost synchronized flashing at the incoming and departing limbs. One sunspot is heading over to the far side, but the other is incoming. Umbral fields seem to suggest there's big activity about to come into view. And to the south of it, that looks like a bigger coronal hole as well, surrounded by filaments. Things have been calm a number of days. Maybe that's about to change. Up first in the articles today, if you watch one other video today, consider the super interview on the liquid sun. This is a big one, and it's definitely a top recommendation. It's on the Demystify Science podcast channel, and folks, a paradigm shift may be coming soon. And speaking of the liquid sun, you really need a real surface like Dr. Robitaille suggests in order for the Wilson effect to be real. And folks, this is one of my favorite proofs. I'm not even sure if Pierre focuses on this one. Doppler gram neutral iron returns show the elevation on the sun. Yeah, you heard that correctly. Elevation. Folks, if they fix the science on the sun, they're going to fix the rest of astronomy. Pipe dreams. I want to hit this one on the October 2024 solar storm. This one dazzled me here in Colorado. I got the best auroral shots of my entire life, and here's why. The red aurora extended up so high it's never been seen to that extent before. This implies a major plasma disruption in the ionosphere with heating and expansion. We didn't even get that level back in May of 2024, and I highly doubt it would have happened if we weren't in the midst of a magnetic pole shift. I'd have guessed this would take an X-20 impact. Nope. Last but not least, top story today is the detail we're getting about the last disaster, the Tianqi event, the NOAA event. And folks, welcome to the West Pacific Anomaly. Just like the South Atlantic Anomaly is astride the new pole position we expect in South America, the West Pacific Week Anomaly is right next to where the magnetic poles are on a collision course. And folks, the appearance of these anomalies with the pole shifts is expected. And not only that, but the data here shows that the drop in magnetic field strength back then, the red dots, rewrites the previous data in blue and orange, showing that this magnetic change was indeed a full reversal and hypomagnetic event on the planet. Folks, I doubt many of you need reminding, but the confirmation of the 6,000 years ago event means the cycle picture is complete. And here we go again right now. Did any of you not see the official trailer for the documentary? Zuckerberg kind of stole the show there, didn't he? Gotta love that. Thanks, Zuck. All about what's happening right now, and one of the best ways to learn more and dial in your preps is to come see us at Observer Ranch. Pole shift conferences and prepper days ongoing all season long, and folks, we have a lot coming in October. Not just the prepper event, but the Colorado Prepper Expo. We're sponsoring it coprepperexpo.com to get your tickets and we'll have more info on the super retreat experience by the end of this week we greatly appreciate your support observerranch.com to plan your trip to come see us we'll do this all again tomorrow right here right now at 6 a.m in the new valley of the sun eyes open no fear be safe everyone